people, um, Stuart has sat out today, but Phil Attridge and Alex Grant are with us as usual. I'm Roy Stuart. Um, First Minister's questions. After the Liberal Party conference, we've had the Labour Party conference this week with a no doubt um, reinvigorated Scottish Labour Party. Sorry. British Labour Party, regional Scottish Party, and we were expecting some fireworks. Did we get them, Phil? Yeah, oh, fireworks, I suspect. I mean, you had the usual um, pathetic, um, and a lot more pathetic this, this week from Joanne. Um, every time she, she got an answer from a question, she didn't respond to it at all. She just read out from that useless script that she has. Um, she... And I can't actually get out of, her, out of my mind um, her at the National Conference, referring to nationalists as virus. Uh, I don't mean it as an insult, but is she thick? Or does she really realise what she, she said? You don't mean it as an insult. <laughs> well, I do then, right? Allegedly, she's thick. It's an appropriate observation. An insult would be an unjustified comment. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it's, it's a totally comment. justified that she refers Correct. to Welsh, Irish, uh, Scottish, Cuban, all these nations that used to be English, subjugated, English, subjugated, yeah, English, um, yeah. subjugated by England originally, yeah. or i.e. Britain, across the planet, that fought for the right to self-determination. They were all nationalists, so they're all virus. So she got to do what the Nazis did then, and go to exterminate them. Because that's what sorry, the British sorry, love sorry, to do. Sorry, a Horrible rule. woman. Sorry, she was there's pathetic. A rule, there's a rule about that. As soon as somebody mentions the Nazis, that's it. Discussion finished. So you can't see anything. Which, which law is it again? I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. that's the Every, quote she was given. It was, yeah. That's the quote she was given. Um, Ruth Davis. Uh, Ruth Davidson. Uh, really, he just missed her. Oh, he, obviously, she, she was not in charge of... She, uh, didn't, she didn't learn from last week. Yeah. No. He, he, I mean, he's a, he's a master of economics. You know? I mean, he's really, really good. We really... Um, yeah. <laughs> we really was... Yeah, I thought, wow. There does seem to be a reason for you to be in there. He brought up a really very, very relevant um, question, concern, and I didn't think Salmon handled it very well because at the end of the day, all he kept repeating was the mantra was, well, are you tell one to these people with their jobs. They're destroying an area. You've got these rapacious mining companies from all over the world, and if you see what they do in everywhere in Africa, in Australia, and that, I mean, that. that they just come in and destroy whole places and then go bankrupt. And that can be actually a, that can be deliberate so they don't have to meet their obligations. And he appears to be backing them up. I don't think he handled that very, very well. Um, leave it there. Alex? Uh, yeah, um, I think we reached such a high, high spot last week. It was hard, hard one to follow in, mm. in any respect. Um, I, I, I agree with Phil about Mrs. Virus, um, and I think Alex came back fairly strongly on her. And, you know, oh, I'm glad you're, you're actually not allowed to talk about a bedroom tax because you've been wittering yeah. about it for months until your your dear leader down the road decided that he was he was going to abolish it. Well, terrific! I think he still he still continues to miss the opportunity to say you invented it. I mean, because yeah. well, they may have invented it for one sector, but the fact is they introduced it along with privatisation in the health service. And I still think he ought to get stuck into that far more readily. So our attack on the 20 million, it's an easy attack. We've discussed it before because if, you know, if you're not going to compensate everybody for the 100% the, the effect of what the Tories and the Lib Dems are doing down south, then I'll attack you for it. The ob I think John Swinney gave the honest answer to it as it happens, and she tried to use that against him, and he ignored it. Um, he did go back at her fairly well, don't get me wrong, but I, I still think he ought to say, uh, we can't spend any more. And by the, but by the way, if, if we did spend more, where are you suggesting we take the money from? Because, you know, we can't just spirit the money out well, of the air. Well, she, I mean, she's done a sour today when she held up this bill. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know. Has anybody had sight of it except the Labour Party? No, I don't think. No. How to cure the bedroom tax? Yeah, yeah, no. So, have they been sitting on that for six months until they got the, no, the no, green no, no, flag? No, no, well, he th he threw, from no. Well, he threw it. No, he ostensibly put it in front of Nicola in that public debate, as yeah. you know, but it, but it never surfaced anywhere else after that. So, theoretically, they did, they did have a bill, the content of which I don't know, but I think you're right. The answer ought to be. 
Well, they have to find out what's in that bill because I'd like to know where the money's going to come from, apart from you know saving, as they keep saying, him, him, him going on, on to the right of court. Well, well my, yeah. my big problem with it was it was inherently dishonest. She well, was talking about a £20 million cut because they haven't guaranteed it in next year's I know, budget, yeah, yeah. which hasn't been put together yet. Well, but if that's true, he should be able to say that then. And the point well, is, I, I thought he missed. I thought he yeah, missed but the you point. Can, yeah, but you can only say that, um, Nori, if if that's what you if you are seriously considering doing that, because otherwise you're you know hoist by your own petard. If you actually say we're, we haven't at, we haven't at the budget yet, we'll let you know when we get there. You can only say that if you think you're going to spend it. And at the minute, the inference is, well, they the aren't going to spend it. Well, the argument is, surely we don't know what's coming down the line. The Tories could introduce a tax on glasses. You know, I mean, we don't know where the money would be best spent next year. It might right. be a case of something more terrible than the bedroom well, tax if, comes if, if it's seriously possible, you should say it. I mean, for example, he could have said, we're going to take the money, that, instead of giving it to Rich Waynes for a free meal, we're going to give that to folk. We could have done that, but then you get attacked that. That. Mm. that was a surprise. I thought Willie Rennie would have had that one in his pocket. Aye, so did I. So did I. I'm but surprised he, but, that didn't come up. Well, well, I think Willie Rennie went for an easier target because there's no doubt when you're in opposition, um, dealing with what, what employers are doing, the consequence of which might be to stop the employment happening is quite a tricky one. So it's an easy line of attack. And as Phil said, in the whole of the 30 minutes, um, that was the one thing that he didn't answer because, quite frankly, he said, well, no, we haven't got the guarantees and if they do go bust and they don't clean up the mess, uh, there's nothing we can do about it because we've accepted that in order to employ some people. I don't know how many it is. I don't know what the, what the potential clean-up cost is relative to the benefit of the employment, but I hope somebody's worked it out. But Because it, it's also not just about here. If you look at Alberta, if you look all over South America in oh, the yeah, Andes, yeah. where they're removing mountains, where they're destroying whole communities, killing the communities, poisoning the communities, poisoning rivers, destroying wildlife, yeah. fauna, they're doing it everywhere. And the whole point is, it's now coming into Scotland. Scotland's a big country um, when, when, once you get up north, because, you know, I mean, the British denuded it, or the English, with their crystallines, denuded it. And it's there, all these mountains and that, waiting to be ripped out to... For the benefit of actually They're huge, Canadian, mountains, don't you huge Canadian, South American, Australian companies that are coming here and destroy this country and walk away. Um, but but don't it, let it happen in the first place. Is it, is it so directly linked to the price of coal? Is that the problem? That it's not worth doing? If it's not worth doing, why do it? Put the money into renewables. For a hundred odd... You know, well, I'd like, to, I'd like to know how many people are employed, because I suspect that it's not a hell of a, a lot. Of cost of cost. I mean, cost. I mean I t well, that's the point about it. You can get one guy in a dumper truck and one guy in a crane, essentially. Um, yeah, but if Wally Rennie was being honest, if that's true, he should say, he should say this is giving jobs to 50 people, um, and the clean-up cost from the last lot that went away was umpteen million. It's not worth it, you know. Retrain them to do something else, but it's yeah. a better way to spend the money rather than despoiling the... The environment, and then having all that cost because there's only one, it's only us who can pick up the yeah. cost afterwards that they've got. Yeah, and what's one of our biggest um, money earners in this in, in this country is tourism. Who's going to come and have a look at our destroyed <laughs> landscape? I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Who's going to? Who's going to? The areas they're talking about won't get a lot of tourists. No, it, it, no, no, no. That, let's, that let's can not, feed into water. That can affect let, your whiskey. Let's, let's, not, let's, not, let's not get hung up on that. I mean, yeah. I, just to go back to it, I, uh, I think um, the, the 20 million, only 20 million to uh, offset the, uh, the bedroom taxes, uh, it's an understandable attack, but it's, 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 I think he took her out of the knees on that because they don't but mention he didn't, bedroom. He didn't even mention that it's not 20 million, it's 32 million. There's 12 million in the pot already. Okay, right. mm. I would be interested to see what this legal case he keeps going on about is about. Uh, well, there, there's a... Uh, yeah, I can't remember the details. Somebody challenged the the applicability of the bedroom tax. I think it's I think it's a disability angle. And there's a chance that some of it might be declared as illegal. You can't actually charge the bedroom tax to, to the following group of people. But it's still... In progress, so no, no, I don't mean that. What? Why is there a cap at twenty million? 
Oh, I Why see. Why can't the government give more? Does anybody know? Yeah, well, I've read it, but I can't remember what it said. Oh, I mean, the argument, okay. but the thing is, it's a specious bloody defence, to be quite frank. Mm -hmm. That's all technically, I'm sure that is legally correct, because he says it's legally correct, in the specifics regarding this particular issue, the bedroom tax. What, the, what other people have said, and, and more neutral people than the Labour Party, is, well, you could actually... You, you can identify the people who've got the problem with the bedroom tax and give them an extra three and four pounds to pay for mints. You know, it doesn't, you know, I'm being flip facetious, but you can give, you can identify those people and give them the money back another way. It's got to come from somewhere. But what his defence and the, the Scottish government's defence is, in the specifics in regard to the bedroom tax in welfare, the maximum we're allowed to put back in is twenty million. But you can give the, these people money from another direction. They should just be upfront and honest and say, look, we can't, somebody else would have to suffer. If you'd like to make a proposal that, that says this would be a better way of spending the money, then make it and we'll talk about it. Of course, if you invite somebody... Well, I, I like, presume at some point this bill that they're all waving about will have to, to go public. Or are they simply going to use it as a prop? I don't know. Well, up till now they've only used it as a prop. So I don't know the answer to that now. Mm. I couldn't tell you. Um, Ruth Davis. <laughs> Ruth Davison's... Litany of statistics, oh. um, the argument being that in 22 years, which is practically a generation, we're going to have a problem. She mentioned with, 22 years? No, but she's, she's talking about 2035, okay. which is when the stats apparently reach to, that we're actually at that point going to suddenly become on a level playing field with the rest of the UK and after that. Apparently, we're going to start yeah, working worse. longer, and so we've got 22 years to sort it out. It was messy. It wasn't punchy, as far as I'm concerned. Had she been more punchy with it, but she did the same last week. She quoted, you know, right, well, she published in, uh, document, and she got in a trouble last week. I think she got in a less trouble today because I actually think the way the Scottish government is handling this pension issue is not perfect. Because I mean, they made a statement the other day about. Uh, Right, well, we agree with the, the moving the, ben, the pension age in date X to, to, to 66, that's fine. However, we don't believe in accelerating any further until we've had a chance to review the, the exact the detail of what the Scottish situation is. Now, if you're going to do that, you leave yourself open to attack. Uh, although the defence was, you know, look, we haven't said we're not going to do it. We said because people don't live to the same age here, which is an issue that we have to deal with, but, uh, but we have to take into account the idiosyncratic detail of what the Scottish situation is. That's fine. What happens on TV that night, on news night? Nobody from the Scottish Government is available to discuss the pension situation. I don't understand that. Um, fine. So, well, there was nobody available. Nobody, there was nobody from John Swinney's Last department. Night. No, no, two nights. Well, the day after they made it, the, right. the, right. the, first, the first time it came up, no one was available to talk about it. I can see Brewer's ugly face, you know. And, Nobody was available to talk Allegedly. about it. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's motherless. They probably thought the consequences of what they say because my automatic reaction was it's right, we all die early, so we'll give you your money early. And I think, no, a better way to spend the money is to do what Finland did in the 70s. Who Finland were like, we, we were overweight, dying of heart attacks, yeah. cancers, and cirrhosis, things. and all that. Within 30 years, and that money with taking up and the offer with that 16 million or whatever they're going to get, 160 million from the UK government um, for the free school meals, that's where you start and do that at the kid, right? What they'll do is in 30 years, um, we hope we can actually raise the, the retirement age. Yeah, well, right. that's, that's essentially what they've said. Yeah, but all I'm saying is, though, that if you're gonna if you're gonna make a statement about pensions, you need to stand behind it and argue your case very strongly. I mean, there's some there's some good stuff out there about pensions, but it's very easy just to quote this mantra, which she was trying to quote: is the Scottish the ratio of pensioners to working age people in Scotland is gonna get higher faster than in England. Now there are other statistics that have to be taken into account and if you're going to use those in the, as the basis for a more detailed review of the Scottish situation you need to stand four square behind them and argue. I think he did reasonably well there but there was a lot of well, bullshit his, going his on. final, I have a letter here from the Department of Work and Pensions saying that there will be no change in an independent Scotland. 
I but yeah, that was a good thing to use. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. It was a good thing to use. But all that said was, in, in answer to a question that said, if Scotland becomes independent, well, I still get my state pension. Yes. That ain't what she was arguing about. But it was a nice no, thing to throw in. No, but that, that was... It was a good political you know, move. Yeah, yeah. But there's also things that can change. Um, just the whole idea. Scotland gets independence. Yeah. England needs the European Union. So England's full of Europeans. They will have to leave or be foreign nationals. Uh, a lot of the problems when it comes to actually people here working and providing and creating wealth, which we have, the, which we, we have all the resources up here to do, um, we'll have more people in here. It could be, a lot of it can be solved by immigration because we're not as, at the moment, not as xenophobic as our neighbours south of the border. No, I know, but uh, that's a whole interesting ball game we get into. Yeah, but there's, it, all these things are, are there and you can't put well, them into the equation at the moment. What about, what about Joanna's opening? Um, should the SNP encourage people in England to vote Labour to right. get rid of the well, that, that, was good, that was a good laugh. <laughs> yeah, that, so you're right, we should have mentioned that up front. That was the funniest yeah, thing yeah. in the lot. Oh, right, very good, we'll do that. <coughs> I don't remember the SNP encouraging folk to vote Liberal Democrat, by the way, which was no. said. Not no, no, the woman's, it's... I don't remember that either. No, I, that's what she said. She raves now. She just raves. She wow. just... Right. So all, all she does is she gets a script in for it. Yeah. She keeps saying. Um, Go on. Of course, it's whilst admitting to a personal interest, the fire brigade on strike down south and still in negotiations mm -hmm. in Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's a serious issue about moving local turnout facilities to two points. I mean, uh, well, it's interesting because the thing that occurred to me when, the, when this first came up and was mentioned today uh, is there was a there has been a lot of criticism about various things being consolidated for reasons we all know it common sense is a good idea because we're, what is what they're doing is trying to save money in in an austerity scenario and there's been a lot of criticism for example the FC rescue facilities the coast guard all that stuff being consolidated is into one rescue center on, on Clydeside covering the whole of the coastline of Scotland and that's very dangerous personally I think that's a lot more dangerous than than consolidating fire brigades, uh, but it's a reasonable question, and I just hope somebody who's doing it is going through a risk analysis. I, I mean, when I first joined the fire brigade in the seventies, you got turned out from the station. So essentially, you had a guy who sat on a board with little clickers that came down and clicked, mm -hmm. and fell asleep and didn't hear them, um, and it was phoned to you, and you turned out the station from within the station. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any reason that that can't be utilised again. Well, I mean, in, in, in an IT age, for God's sake, if somebody says, you know, the, there's a fire in Buckaloo Street, then somebody sitting in a, in a nerve centre with a bloody great screen on the wall can see where Buckaloo Street is, phone up the nearest fire station and say, can you go around to Buckaloo Street, because they know where it is, and off they go. Yeah, but you, get, but you get a situation where somebody phones up from Edinburgh and says, Bennett's Bar's on fire, puts the phone down. There's three Bennett's Bar's on Edinburgh. Well, well and if you're sitting at Toll Cross, it could be Morris, Morrison Street, more inside on Bennett's. Well, again. fine, but if but if the if the if the centre was in Edinburgh, they wouldn't know which one it was. Yeah, they well, could actually open the window of Morrison and go. Yeah, oh, there is there is a thing. Oh, wait, yes, there please. is a thing called a phone, and I should imagine the three bars all have telephones, so you could phone one. Not at four o'clock in the morning, mate. Oh, um, I'm sorry, I can come up with a scenario that anything. No, well, no, there's, there, is no, the there is no doubt. Look, there is, there, is, there is no doubt. It's a, re it's a reasonable question. And as with any of these things to do with regulation and safety control, as I've waxed lyrical about and bored you to death in the past, uh, you know, you've got to go through a proper risk analysis and satisfy yourself that in order to save a million, are we actually increasing the risk to an inordinate degree? You know, and there are certain things they won't do that with, although I find the whole investigation into this he these helicopters coming down in, in, in the drink in the North Sea highly questionable because it wasn't a technical problem, but no one no one seems to know what it was before people died and what the hell. It's been about on. 20 people in the last, is it how many people in the last four or five years? Oh yeah, well there was, there, was, there was about 15 died 18 months, two yeah. years ago now, and then there's four more. So, And we, the Super Pumas had, had, a, had, a, had a, an incident rate in the Scot in the British sector that it hasn't had in, in other sectors. So as far as I'm aware, the, the aircraft itself 
hasn't been a problem elsewhere. And I, if it's a problem here, it tells you that Same. some somebody's behaviour and practices needs serious looking at, and it's, it's been going on for a long time. Mm. And it's, it's going to be a long time before this report comes. Anyway, come back to the point. It's about risk assessment. If you're going to consolidate the police force or consolidate the fire service or any other thing where there's a potential downside risk, somebody, a minister needs to stand up and say, yeah, by definition, there is a risk, but it's an acceptable risk relative to the constraints we find ourselves under and be honest about it. Because 10 fire control centers can probably dispatch people more accurately than one fact. Because as you quite rightly said, they've got local knowledge. But given we've all got to cut cost guys, is it an acceptable hmm. risk? Don't speak to anyone. That's a Tory one. No, it's not. No, 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 as well. But, but, you know but, but also, just, just one way on the different ways that Scotland is dealing with it, which is they're obviously trying to find uh, a resolution. Uh, whereas in England, it's, it's that old story. It sounds like they're actually trying to break the back of the FBU in England. But it's always been the same. Even in my day, English fire brigades were treated differently. To Scottish fire brigades, there was, I mean, I don't know if people realise, but in the fire brigade there's no two-tier entry, so everybody in the fire brigade at some point was a fireman shovel and shit. And in my particular brigade, Glasgow was different, but in Lothian and Borders there was always discussion. You know, we're going to, very often was, we're going to have to implement this government policy. How do we do it least painlessly and most sensibly? So there was very few disputes, unless yeah. it was about wages. I, I know. Whereas in England, it's they walked out the door every five minutes. It's confrontational. But you have to, to go back to the specifics of this issue, though, Nori, um, to say to the world now that you insist on being able to retire at 55 with a decent pension, you won't get much public support for that. Well, as I say, anybody that brings it up, okay, here's a deal. I don't want to sit here on that track. You go and do 20 press-ups ah. with a BA senior back in a sauna. I, I agree. I understand that. And I think the answer to that, in my opinion, should be, if you employ, and this is what I would do, if you employ X thousand people in the fire service, you should be employing them in, in a public utility that goes beyond the fire service that says, at the age of 55, when you're no, if you're no longer fit to, to do exactly as you've just described, we will find you a job at the same salary somewhere else in the public sector that you can do so that you can, so that you can retire the same as Mrs. McSwackle can retire around the corner. You can't say to a bloke, just because, or a woman these days, just because you signed up for the fire service, it gives you the privilege of retiring 10, 15 years before anybody else. That is economic bull bullshit. So in that case, you're going to cut the massive contribution to their pension. The fire brigade contribution to the fire brigade pension mm -hmm. is predicated on the fact that they retire at 55. Yeah. Right? It's a bigger contribution than the police. It's no, a no, bigger I've, contribution mm -hmm. to civil service. And I know, and, and, the, and what they're saying is, in this day and age, when people are living to the no. age they live to, it's an unacceptable no. cost. Now, the what, what say no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. What they're saying is, you will continue to pay the same amount into your pension pot, but if you retire at 55, we'll cut what we've agreed, which is the 100%, to 80%. No, I'd restrike the, I'd restrike the pension. I, what I would do in that scenario is I'd say, right, you've got to retire at 65 or whatever, like anybody else, and, and, you, and your contribution to the pension will be appropriate to that retirement age, as will the government's, and we will find you alternative employment when you're no longer able to, that's, to, that's to run up a chimney. Okay. No. I know, I'm fine, I know. I, but can I just stick something in here? This, this is the totally practical thing, which is what Norrie's saying about the age of being a fireman. Now, the other week, uh, sorry about this, Norrie, we went for a walk <laughs> from the Scottish Parliament up Corton Hill. I've yeah. never been a sporty person, he's been a sporty person, all that. Mm -hmm. He's in his middle-ish 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, 57, and if you'd, been retired if you'd seen what he was like oh. when we got hey. to Corton Hill, I actually felt fit. That's too much beer, though. He was just as bad as me. He, I mean, we were, we, we, we just seen this wall and went, a wall, a wall, and we just I know, sat and, and I keep reading <laughs> things that it's not, to, it tends not to be the fire service they talk about. I keep reading comments saying that there's more fat polos out there who aren't fit to run if somebody, mm. you know, lifts yeah. someone's handbag and runs off down the street, they couldn't catch them. That's, 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 that's me done my little bit for the FBU. Excellent. Uh, the only decent communist union left in the country. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, and, that's, and the Castros uh, would, nationalists that they are, the Castros would agree with that too. 
Can we have some scores then? Let, let's start, well, let's start with Willie. Willie Rennie. Willie, um, yeah, out uh, of uh, all the opposition punters today, I thought he was very good. Um, he's the only one, and he put Salmond on his back, but I'm afraid I'll need to give Willie, or... Oh, I don't feel really uncomfortable doing this. I'm going to give Willie six. Yeah, so would I. Well, I'm actually going to give him seven. I was quite impressed with Willie. They came across well. Yeah. Um, let's go to Ruthie, babe. No, Ruth. you can't give her zero. No, I won't give her zero because... Um, no, I think her attack was, was halfway reasonable. I yeah, she started off really well, and then, but then I got lost with all these figures. But when it comes to figures, I'm sorry, uh, she's a Tory, I would trust. Uh, what Salmon. But I'll, 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 give, I'll give her... Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll give her three. No, I'll give her five. Uh, Ruth, Ruth, nah, it was messy. I can't even remember what she said, so nah, she's getting a two. Nah, I think it'd be unfair, but let me go. Joanne? Joanne, I just, all I could see listening to her burp in a, whatever word, pesh, um, was <laughs> her loathsome, horrible slaverings at the, at, 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 at the, at the conference. Um, no, was, you can't talk about the conference. Sorry, where she was enticing violence, and I'm no. looking at this. The no. woman's a disgrace. No. I don't feel comfortable Question giving her a thing. zero. I don't feel comfortable giving her Question a zero, thing. so I'll give her minus five. <laughs> <laughs> I give her two. No, I thought she was... No, no, sorry, I, I mean, sorry, that is not my leader. Well... Yeah, right. She okay. was doing the shaking, reading thing. She seems to be up and down with that. No, she didn't do anything impressive, sorry. Right. Two. Alex. Alex, again, Willie, yeah, Willie gave him a good kick in there. Well, I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll give Alex seven. That's what we deserve, I think. Yeah, I'll give him seven as well. Do it, do it, seven, seven. Mm. Well, he's getting up there near him. <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he actually dealt well, with... Well, Willie only had to ask one question. Yeah, 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 yeah. To be fair, but if we're going to count them and what they did right across the piece. Oh. Willie was as good as Alec, arguably. Yeah. Oh, yes. Nearly. Mm. But he didn't have to do anything. He wasn't answering anything. No. He was only making a point. But he made a point that hit home. Very relevant. I don't point. think he was on his best game. So I'm going to give him a six. Okay. Uh, the pr 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 presiding officer. Two. Ooh, that was quick. Yeah. Well, it, it was messy and she made, a, she, made a, she made one mistake as well, but there was a lot of yaboo sucks going on today and she should, she's, she's still not doing anything about it. She's got to shout out names, she's got to put people on the spot, otherwise that's why they keep doing it. So yeah, well, two. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Joanne's got minus one. Here off here with the fairies here. Minus one, but I think, I, think, oh. I think a lot of that is to do with a virus comment. That it's a virus, totally. Yeah, with me, it's like, uh, <laughs> Willie, Willie Rennie, 19. 19, yeah. that's probably his highest score ever. It is, so yeah. Quite yeah. impressed well, with Willie. He's fine. Yeah, he, he hit home with one, with one question. He, well presented yeah. and a yeah. real question. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Ruth Davidson, a 10. I, mm, oh. Well, I think we're a bit split on that, to be yeah, fair. But, um. Yeah. Uh, Alex sneaks in with a 20, only one in it. Yeah. And the presiding officer, a bad score this week, a 7. Well, thanks, gents. Um, it's been an interesting week with the Labour Party conference. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next week. And Hopefully remember, with Stuart. Yeah, and remember it was 30,000 on the march, not 8,000. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the pause. Bye for now. Bye-bye.